Good Tuesday morning, YouTube. How are you guys doing today? So this morning, I wanted to take a moment to play a little video clip for you guys. The video clip, the person in the video clip that is speaking is Professor um, Joy DeGruy. Uh, Professor DeGruy is also the author of the author, I'm sorry, of post-traumatic slave syndrome. Okay, and she's going to be this morning in the clip explaining the difference between post-traumatic slave syndrome and PTSD, post-traumatic slave disorder. So I'm going to play the clip for you guys, um, and we'll come back to discuss. I don't know. Post-traumatic slave syndrome is an explanatory theory that really looks at multi-generational trauma. One of the things that's difficult for people is their first response is, oh my God, that happened so long ago. We're talking about people being captured, shipped, sold, beaten, raped, experimented on. And then you have to ask the question, did the trauma continue? Yes. So 300 years of trauma, no help, freed. No help, more trauma. If it's a sustained trauma, then the, the impact of that is also sustained. When we look at multi-generational trauma, we're looking at people who are maybe victims of natural disasters and their families and their children and generations of folks who have experienced war. Uh, and we know that there are residual uh, mental, emotional, traumatic impact. And what I did was I started to look at the African-American experience, starting with slavery, as a real clear long enduring trauma. So I started to see that there were clear connections between that survival behavior and contemporary living in African American experience. I started to see common behaviors that I took for granted as well cultural. There's adaptive behaviors, survival behaviors. Well what are they? Let's just say 2019 you have a black mother and a white mother. The sons go to school together. They find themselves at a meeting. The black mother leans over to the white mother and says, I just wanted to mention to you that I noticed that your son is really doing quite well. And the white mother's response is, oh, thank you. She begins to go on and on about, he won the science fair, his uncle's an astronaut. She's just oozing. She realizes the black mother's son is actually excelling her son. And she says, well, wait a minute. Your son's the one that's really coming along. And the black mother responds, oh my God, he's a handful, but oh, he just works my nerves. Now, when I'm working with African-American people, it doesn't matter what the audience is. It doesn't matter what class. If I were to ask, is she very proud while she's saying those denigrating things? And everybody laughs and goes, of course, there's a secret. Because everybody black knows that even though the black mother is going, oh my God, she's really proud. So now let's roll that scene back 300 years. And let's say this black mother is working in the fields and a white slave owner comes through and says, wow, that boy is really coming along. What is she going to say? No, he's not. He's, he's stupid. He's, he's shiftless. He can't work because I don't want you to sell him. So I denigrate them to protect them. That is called appropriate adaptation when living in a hostile environment. The little white boy, say Timmy, you know, he feels really comfortable and happy about what his mom just said about him. And Trey looks at his mom and wonders, why can't you be proud of me? Because he doesn't understand the secret yet. And by the time he learns the secret, he will have already been injured by it. Post-traumatic slave syndrome. PTSD um, is a disorder that occurs as a result of a single trauma. You don't even have to be there to actually get a diagnosis of post-traumatic stress disorder. You could just hear about something horrific happening to someone you love. So you have people who have experienced it firsthand, people who have witnessed it in their environment, right? People who are continuing to be oppressed. That exacerbates any possibility of healing. So it's not post-traumatic stress disorder because then it becomes part of uh, what we call your socialization process. So you begin to normalize a way of living and being. Everything from what we eat to what we believe it means to be a friend. You know, all of these things are colored by history. And if you don't understand it, you're going to fold in things that you've just assumed are normal. But post-traumatic stress disorder, you know, exaggerated startle response, outbursts of anger, a uh, feeling of foreshortened future. There was a point where there were you know, African-American children in different urban settings that didn't expect to live to be adults because they saw so much death. 
that they started planning their funerals like at 13, 12, as young as 10. It, when you start looking at the, the simple biology, you start looking at the, the impact of stress on health. And while we look at general stress, you know, we know finances, you have illnesses, all these different things. How about being black? How does factoring in being black in America impact your stress level and therefore your body's ability to operate its own immune system? Because we know it compromises the immune system. Once you understand it, then you can deal with it. Because you see, it's habitual. You socialize. It becomes part of your being. So one of the ways you begin to address that multi-generational trauma is to work with the people it directly impacts, to hear from them. And when you give the people the information, they, they can use it. I think the first order of business is beginning to have a conversation. And the other is to educate the larger society. You have to stop the assault. So this is not purely a clinical thing. This requires social justice and change. That's where part of the healing is. It's not in a clinical setting or in a pill. It's in fairness and justice and safety and equity. We got to work with some of those clinical things, some of those issues of panic and anxiety. And we also have to deal with the fact that you have a system that is set up to oppress you and to continue to injure you. Both those things have to be dealt with. And they cannot singularly by themselves affect a change. They have to be done collectively. Wow, that was amazing. I learned so much from that little bitty uh, five or so minute clip. What I found interesting uh, is that she said a lot of the habitual behaviors that a lot of us as ADOS people do, American black people, uh, a lot of the behaviors that we call culture are uh, actually socialized, uh, a form of socialization or a form of, you know, passed down from generational to generational um, toxic habitual uh, acts that we, you know, everything from eating to the way we speak, uh, to the way we treat our children, to the way that we raise our, our, especially raise our boys. You know, we spoke a lot about um, how a lot of women are reared from a, a young age to protect the boys, um, you know, in the home because we know that, uh, you know, as they get older, they become more of a threat. Do you see what I'm saying? Um, as it pertains to being black, being male, and being in America. Uh, and so for that reason, we coddle them, a lot of us. You know, we overly protect them um, sometimes because we try to protect them so much. Uh, as Dr. DeGruy says, you will start to speak down on them, not knowing the whole time that it is really traumatizing them, you know, and making them feel anger towards you um, as the black woman. And that is a lot. I think that is a lot of deep seated anger, a lot of the deep seated anger that we see coming from our black men in the community. A lot of that stems from that, in my opinion, you start out wanting to protect them, but you end up imposing even more trauma on them as they get older, as you grow um, more stressed out, um, as you grow more fearful, you know. And for that reason, a lot of men have been emasculated to the point that they either don't want to fool with other women of their own race or they actually even want to fool with other men. I know it sounds crazy. Uh, that is not the only reason. That is just an example because um, it really struck a chord in me when she spoke about how the black mother was speaking about her son as opposed to how the Anglo mother was speaking, you know, so glaringly and so glowingly, you know, about her son. Do you see what I'm saying? So anyway, that's all I got on this. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you guys learned something from this video. I know I did. It made me think. Of course, I have read the book Post Traumatic Slave Syndrome. I don't know if you guys have, but it is a wonderful book. Okay, you guys should really try to check that out. Uh, get that book on Amazon. And as your children get older, if you are in a family of readers, um, introduce that book to your children at an appropriate age, of course, at an age in which they can understand. And so I think that it will help them along. Uh, and if you will, give them a sort of roadmap uh, as to what is going on with them and why they do the things that they do. Even if you read it yourself, you will start to understand why you do some of the things that you do. But anyway, like I said, that's all I got for right now. Like, share, subscribe. Let this, let's get this conversation started in the comment section below. And I'll talk to you guys later. Bye-bye. Peace.